will be conducting their spring pasta dinner. The Dante Society is having their annual spring pasta and meatball dinner on Saturday, May 11th, from 4.30 p.m. to 7 p.m. The menu will include pasta and meatballs, salad, bread, cake, and tea. The cost is $11 for adults and $7 for children. Takeouts will be available along with a sit-down dinner. The Dante Society is located at 1916-1918 Prospect Avenue in South Scranton, Pennsylvania. So please come on out, support the Dante Society, have a good spaghetti dinner and for $11, and I, we would appreciate your support and your help. Thank you very much. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of reflection for our servicemen and women throughout the world and for all those who died in our community in the last week. Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Here. Mr. Rogan? Here. Mr. Loscombe? Here. Mr. Joyce? Here. Mrs. Evans? Here. Dispense with the reading of the minutes, please. Third order 3A, single tax office city funds distributed comparison for 2013-2012. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3B. Minutes of the Scranton Police Pension Meeting held March 27, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3C, Minutes of the Composite Pension Meeting held March 26, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3D, Controller's Report for the month ending March 31, 2013. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. 3E, construction service agreement between Raymond and Son and Office of Economic and Community Development. Are there any comments? If not, received and filed. Do we have any clerk's notes tonight? No, Mrs. Evans. Thank you, Mrs. Craig. Do any council members have announcements at this time? Yes, just one. Um, the Dante Literary Society will be having their spring pasta dinner on Saturday, May 11th from 4.30 to 7 p.m. The menu will include pasta and meatballs, salad, bread, cake, coffee, and tea. The cost is $11 for adults and $7 for children. Takeouts are available. And I do know that this is one of the tastiest pasta dinners uh, in the city. I'm looking forward to attending. Thank you. Is there anyone else? I need to leave for a moment. I left my glasses in the car. Certainly. <laughs> I have none. Thank you. The Lackawanna County Astronomical Society will celebrate Astronomy Day on Saturday, May 11, 2013, at 7 o'clock p.m. at the Thomas G. Cupolari Observatory. 
The planets Jupiter and Saturn with rings, as well as star clusters and galaxies, will be able to be seen through telescopes. The program is free, admission is free, and the public is invited to attend. Before we begin the uh, citizens' participation portion of our meeting, I wish to make it clear that City Council did not produce any legislation regarding food trucks and eating and drinking establishments. Rather, all legislation was drafted by the law office and submitted to the Office of City Council by the Doherty administration. At Council's request, owners of restaurants, food trucks, and food carts are meeting with Ms. Collins of Scranton tomorrow to develop a consensus and joint recommendation that is fair to all. Prior to the seventh order reading and final vote on the ordinances, Ms. Collins will submit the joint recommendations to City Council for its consideration and possible amendments. Again, the legislation that will be introduced tonight in fifth order was written by the administration and it can very well be amended in the forthcoming weeks. Finally, we thank Mr. Charlie Newcomb, Jr. for volunteering to broadcast tonight's meeting. And that's it. Fourth order, citizens' participation. Our first speaker tonight is Les Spindler. Good evening, Council. Les Spindler, city resident, homeowner, taxpayer. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, I couldn't make it last week. I just want to start off with saying my thoughts and prayers are go out to the family of Mark Walsh. I knew Mark most of my life. He lived about a half a block away from me, half a block and a half away from me growing up. He and his bro brothers and sisters used to come and shop at my family's grocery store. And uh, it was a tragic loss. They didn't make him any nicer to Mark Walsh. And he's going to be sorely missed. Uh, that's all I'd say on that. Uh, last week in the Doherty newsletter, another terrible cartoon by John Cole, trying to embarrass Mr. Courtright. That's all this guy ever does is embarrass people and try to degrade them. No matter what way Mr. Courtright's running the tax office, you can't argue with the job he's doing. He's done a fantastic job. He's brought money into the city that none of his predecessors ever did. We've probably seen millions of dollars come into the city since he took over. Uh, we don't even want to talk about the way Ken McDowell ran it. So uh, it's just a joke. And why don't they put something in there about Liz Randall, like, uh, oops, where's my gun? And that's another story. The story they ran about that in the uh, newspaper was totally false. She lost her gun. She didn't give it to somebody to get clean. I know this for a fact. I heard it from a very good source. So it's more lies by the Doherty newsletter just, just to spin it any way they want to for somebody they support. And again, Mr. Courtright's doing a heck of a job in the tax office. There's no denying that. Uh, moving on. What's the uh, status on the Lake Grant Road situation? Is there any update on that? Uh, last I heard, um, a contract of sorts was being developed between Civil Crossroads, the uh, fallback engineer, because you remember SECO uh, rejected the project because they felt they had a conflict of interest. Right. And so uh, Civil Crossroads will actually be uh, doing various... Um, observations, we shall say, up there. They, they outlined it in a letter to council, and then they will provide the final recommendations. Okay, but meantime, those people are still suffering with trucks going back and forth. Am I correct? It would seem so, yeah. no until, we, until we've received the results of the engineering study. Okay, that's too bad. Uh, lastly, the food trucks. Mm. I've stated here before I'm totally in favor of the food trucks. Uh, I think Making a limit of 500 feet is way too much. 
I think it's got to, I don't know what it should be, but it should be much less than that. Um, I believe, Mr. Spindler, and I'm sorry to interrupt you, uh, the legislation that I was originally given last week did contain, uh, I believe, a statement or language uh, for 500 feet. It's my understanding now, and we can check it through tonight's legislation, that that's been changed to 250 feet. Okay. Now, again, that's not set in stone. I understand. That was, uh, again, presented to us by the administration. In other words, they've changed um, much of what was in the original legislation corrections that needed to be made that were brought to their attention by our solicitor and in so doing uh, they downgraded the amount of footage from 500 to 250 so that's what's currently before us but it does not necessarily mean that that is what will be the final product okay as i stated before i don't think there's much competition for the restaurants as i said a lot of people have half hour lunches they go to these food trucks. They can't sit in a restaurant for an hour or so. So I, I don't think they're hurting businesses. And they are businesses themselves. If we try to chase them out of the city, what message does that send to other businesses looking to move into the city? I think it sheds a bad light on what we're trying to do here. I am totally in favor of them. And that's all I'd say tonight. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Spindler. Karen Foster. Good evening, Council. Karen evening, Foster, West evening. Scranton, resident and president of the West Scranton Hyde Park Neighborhood Watch. I'm just here this evening to thank you for your continued support in our efforts to obtain an Elm Street designation. And as our um, cooperation agreement is before you, um, we hope for your continued support to pass. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. thank you. Our next speaker is Greg Evans. Good evening, Council. Greg Evans, Grant resident, homeowner, business owner. Uh, Good evening. I'm going to be a little more wordy than, than Ms. Karen Foster because I'm very proud of our group. Um, and I have a written, written uh, statement, please. Uh, today I'm here to address you as a founding board member of the West Grant Hyde Park Neighborhood Watch and the co chair of the West Grant Elm Street Project. These passionate group of volunteers, some of them are in the front row right here, um, of which I'm proud to be part of, is unified and empowered by one common goal. goal the revitalization, revitalization of our neighborhood. Our commitment, a committed group of volunteers hosts cleanups, bike patrols, community events, and fundraisers. We're passionate, we're selfless, and we are part of the solution. The efforts of the West Grant and Hyde Park Neighborhood Watch are noticeable. In fact, our neighbors in Southside, who are also here today, some, uh, have begun their own neighborhood watch, and we cooperate fully with one another. We are dedicated to the safety and quality of life in our neighborhoods. Which brings us to item 7C. We're in the preparation phase of our West, West Grant Elm Street project. We have witnessed its transition of Southside through the United Neighborhood Center's Elm Street project there. We wish to mimic the efforts and successes of Southside. Kudos to Michael Hanley, Jill Murren, Gabby Martinez, and everyone who has been instrumental in their planning and execution. We have held multiple we have met multiple times with the Pennsylvania Department of Economic and Community Development, and we have been embraced. They are prepared for us to become one of, another one of their success stories. We have, passionate, we have the passion, we have the manpower, we have the best interests of our neighborhood at heart. With your passing of Resolution 18, 2013, you are giving us something we don't have, the ability to financially revitalize West Granton. You are giving us the opportunity to bring hundreds and thousands of dollars and state grant money to improve Scranton. We look forward to you supporting the West Grant Hyde Park Neighborhood Watch further and are excited to have the financial means to continue our re revitalization efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Doug Miller. Good evening, Council. Doug Miller, Scranton. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I'd like to begin tonight. Uh, just with a, a brief follow-up to an issue I had raised last week uh, regarding the, the uh, operation of swimming pools uh, throughout the city this summer. And I had suggested that we send a letter to uh, Mr. Dewar to uh, try to determine which pools will be in operation this summer. And uh, 
just wondering at this time if we did receive any response back from uh, Mr. Doerr. Uh, no, we haven't. I didn't check my mail this evening, but throughout the week that intervened, no, we hadn't. But um, I don't know if you saw the article in the newspaper regarding the mayor's statements concerning the neighborhood pools this summer. Uh, he, obviously, there is a great hope to open them. Uh, the city has applied for grants to do so, but they are not at this time specifically naming which pools they will be outside of, of course, the Nayog pool complex. Absolutely, and I, I did, you know, uh, read that article, and uh, I did uh, take a look at the mayor's comments, and I'm under, I'm under you know, the understanding that uh, we did apply for some grants, but, uh, you know, this just goes back to the, you know, the simplicity of the fact, you know, when council sends a letter to someone, um, you, you shouldn't have to read about it in the paper. Um, you know, correspondence should be sent back to you one way or another. This isn't something that should be read in the paper. So that's my only issue. And, you know, it's not the first time we've had this problem with uh, getting responses from department heads. So going forward, uh, I would hope there'd be more cooperation and that we're not reading these things in the paper. You know, you, you are a council and uh, the administration and the department heads have an obligation to respond back to you, not read it in the paper. Uh, I guess the main issue tonight is uh, agenda items 5D through F, dealing with the uh, legislation on the uh, restaurants and the food trucks uh, within the downtown. Uh, you know, my opinion on this is I, I think that uh, we seem to want to make a big issue out of this. Um, I think you're dealing with two totally different uh, venues. This is my belief. Um, you're dealing with brick and mortar restaurants, and you're dealing with food trucks that uh, both serve two totally different purposes. Uh, I've, you know, obviously had the opportunity to utilize both our restaurants throughout the downtown, and I've certainly utilized uh, the food trucks. And my belief is that these are only individuals who are just trying to make a living, just like anyone else in this community. And I don't think either side should be punished. Um, I don't think we should be looking at legislation that uh, does anything to harm both sides. Um, I, I do uh, have a lot of respect for Scranton tomorrow, and it's, it's leader Mrs. Collins who uh, uh, stepped up to the plate and was willing to sit down with both sides and try to work out an agreement. And as you did allude to earlier, Mrs. Evans, uh, she will be presenting council with uh, some sort of cooperative agreement that uh, hopefully we can resolve this issue. Um, as you did say, I think we do need to make it clear once again that this wasn't council that initiated this legislation or, or drafted it for that uh, matter. This did come down from the administration. Um, I am kind of puzzled as to why we at this time want to uh, particularly make an issue out of this. Um, but just moving forward, it's my hope that a resolution will be met and cooperative, cooperatively and that both sides uh, benefit. Um, you know, if, if both sides are following uh, the regulations that they're, you know, obligated to follow, I don't see why at this time we should change anything or, or try to uh, step on anybody's toes. As I said, these are just individuals trying to, uh, you know, make a living for themselves like each and every one of us do every day. And I do appreciate, you know, those that came out tonight and they're going to voice their opinions on it. Uh, you know, I, I don't have any issue with either side. Uh, I guess another issue tonight, uh, dealing with the tax office. Uh, in the paper, we, this, I believe this morning, uh, there was an issue uh, regarding the solicitor and the mayor made it known that uh, he had no plans on funding a solicitor as the uh, tax office at this time is looking to uh, fill uh, the vacant position. Um, I understand the city pays half the salary as well as the Scranton School District. Well, common sense tells you that knowing the city's current fiscal situation, um, if, if it's in our, I, I do believe it's in our interest at this time, if we have the ability to save that money, then that may be a wise thing to do. Maybe it's not wise to pay two solicitors if we have a city solicitor um, who can fulfill those obligations in, in the tax office. I don't think it's, uh, you know, an, I don't think the additional task of handling the tax office is uh, going to be quite, you know, too burdensome on, on our solicitor. Uh, that's, you know, the precedent that uh, has been set, uh, that the city solicitor is to handle the tax office. I, I don't see why we would go away from that. Um, that leads me into the commingling of the funds. It still seems to be an issue down there. And I know there's been some excuses as to, you know, lack of uh, manpower, so to speak. Um, but, you know, this is certainly what's caused a lot of problems in the past with, uh, you know, money that's gone missing and, and certainly causing headaches for us here. Uh, you know, the appropriate thing at this time would be to set up separate accounts so that we can account for every dime coming into the city so that we avoid the confusion and the chaos. I, you know, I, I don't think at this time we need excuses. I think we should just do it. 
We know the current situ situation we face, and I think now is the time to take action and make sure that the money coming in is going to the right places. I don't think we could just assume that money going into one account, we can necessarily say is going to the appropriate bodies, whether, whether it's the county, the school district, or the city. So we need to take action on that once and for all. And, and back to the pools real quick. If it is an issue with opening them, as I said last week, perhaps we should get the school district involved. You know, they have an obligation as well to make sure the kids in this city have a place to recreate and swim. You know, rather than worrying about, you know, squandering money on building new schools and playing politics, why don't we focus on the kids for a change? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Our next speaker is Marie Yeaman. Hi, Council. Thank you for giving me a chance to speak. My name is Joel Marie Yeaman. I'm a local food vendor from the city of Scranton. Wow. I've had a Hello. food truck for um, five and a half years. I see lots of familiar faces, <laughs> actually. And um, I just wanted to get give the chance to, you know, give my point of view that ha being able to have a food truck in the city, to me, has made me feel very proud. You know, it's given me an opportunity to have my own business in the city that I followed all the regula regulations for. I've always been an ordinance. Um, I generate, you know, I, I buy all local food, so I'm my, you know, I, I'm spreading my wealth. You know, I, mm -hmm. I go to the farmer's market, I buy my food from there. I go to Rosenstein's, I go to, you know, it's like I'm spreading my wealth in the city. And I think if, if you know, if, Basically, if this passes, it's really going to be a detriment to all the vendors because we really aren't going to have a place to park in the city. I mean, even if it goes to 250, it really limits us a lot. And um, it just seems a shame because, you know, we were given the opportunity and it, w it was something that was offered to us. And now, for some reason, you know, they want to take it back. And, you know, it just. It, it doesn't seem fair and, you know, it's just, I'm so nervous, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> were, there, were there, if you don't mind me asking, did you ever encounter any issues with the previous ordinance, meaning that which set the footage at 100? No. Was that ever a problem? No. Like I said, I've been doing it for almost six years and I've never had a problem. You know, I, I, I don't know why, you know, they, they are the two, like the brick and mortar, and a vending cart are two different businesses. They're two different, they're two different businesses and both offer a lot. I mean, a restaurant offers, we all know what a restaurant offers, but a food truck also offers excitement to the city and it brings life and you don't believe the things I say. <laughs> People enjoy coming, they enjoy it and it's fun and you know, it's, it's part of the culture of Scranton now. And, and how many how many months per year are you operational? Uh, Twenty. I'm out all year long. Okay, so even in, during so the winter <laughs> months, you you brave it and I, come I, out. I, I earn my living from this, and you know, I will be out of a job <laughs> basically if mm -hmm. you know if if this I will have to you know find a new place to to put it. But I, I have I've worked hard. I started and I had. You know, it was dismal at the beginning, but you know, you work and you build your business, and and it's just a shame that that they would want to stifle something in the city. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. Scranton is a great, great city, and it's you know, it has so much potential, and it seems like every time that a step forward, there's like ten steps back. You know, mm -hmm. and I'd hate to see for that to happen because. I think the trucks benefit the city hugely, and it's just, you know, I enjoy my profession. I love it. I love the people I deal with. I, you know, it's it's a nice profession. Yes. And I just wanted to <laughs> have a say. So, uh, have you yet been contacted by uh, Miss Collins? No, but I'm going. I I just I'm going to. Yes, with her. because it's very important to council that 
the uh, food trucks and uh, carts are represented mm -hmm. and that the discussion is not held solely with the brick and mortar establishments. Uh, you know, basically, we want to hear from all. We'd like all of you to discuss um, perhaps a compromise and come to a consensus so that you're all working to complement one another rather than, you know, one side trying to cancel out the other. I would just add, I received <clears throat> this from one of the other food trucks. It says, um, what does 500 feet really look like? And it has the 100 feet, and it shows you know where where they, the areas they would be banned from, and then it shows five. And I understand maybe right now it's at 250, but even if you took these circles and have them, it would still almost eliminate the yeah. downtown. And I think it, an ordinance like this, as it currently stands, would go against everything that's great about this country of competition and free markets, and you know entrepreneurs going out like yourself and coming up with a good idea, having a good product, and, and bringing it to the market. And I know from over the last week, I've had so many calls and emails and messages on Facebook and Twitter especially um, regarding support, people who are supporting the food trucks. And there absolutely has to be a, a compromise made that works for everyone. But it's for, for myself, if the final legislation expands the 100 feet at all, I'm voting no. Um, I don't think we could go any any further than that the 100 feet already restricts a lot of the downtown area yeah and it, it would and you know if as I think somebody else mentioned it earlier to me the decision would never be to go to a sit down between a sit down restaurant and a food truck it's a completely different experience mm -hmm. um, you know if I have an hour and I want to discuss something with somebody that's when I would go to the sit down restaurant if I'm just looking to get a quick bite to eat you know grab and go that's where mm -hmm. I would go to a food truck so I'll address it more under motions, but I just wanted to mention, and I, I'll make a copy of this for my colleagues, because it really is, um, it, it really shows, you know, with the 500 feet and the I 100 I, feet. I've seen the picture, yeah. It, it really it's shows that it would completely it. Yeah. get food trucks out of the downtown. Yeah. Mrs. Evans. Yes. Um, from, this is from Leslie Collins, uh, Scranton Tomorrow, uh, that there is a meeting for food vendors, as she refers to the mobile mm -hmm. food, uh, on Tuesday the 7th. Okay. Um, she does not have a time or a place listed on the email. They can, if she needs it, yeah, I, they can certainly use council and, chambers. Um, yeah, I, I'm not sure where they were looking at. I, she was talking about, uh, I, I think was talking about the possibility of either Lackawanna College or Trip House where the offices of Scranton tomorrow are. But I, I will, I'll pass that along to her. But just, um, you're, I would suggest that you contact Scranton tomorrow okay. for the exact time and place. Great. Uh, but there is, she does have a meeting set for food vendors only. And that's going to be followed on the 9th by a meeting with both the brick and mortar and the food vendors um, collectively. So there are two meetings being set up um, with Scranton tomorrow so that this issue can be discussed. Well, thank you. You're welcome. And just to you. you know quickly address I think what you touched on initially, um, again the legislation was produced by the administration. So I can only assume that the administration uh, may have been contacted by brick and mortar establishments uh, who had complaints. But, you know, on the other hand, I, I, I think it's also notable that we remember that when the city badly needed a commuter tax, the business community opposed it when the city needs to raise revenue through a parking meter system again the business community opposes it and you know then really uh, just like yourself out of the blue we get legislation involving the business community and the food vendors so um, I certainly don't want to see a case where someone one side is favored over another to the detriment of the others. And uh, hopefully 
we can come to a resolution that's going to be satisfactory and productive for everyone. Because, you know, as, as I've said before, and my colleagues have voiced as well, we welcome all business to the city of Scranton. It is not our purpose to uh, put up obstacles for anyone who would like to come here and do business. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Dave Dobson. Good evening, Council. Dave Dobson, Good President evening. of Scranton. Taxes paid, dog license, garbage piece paid. I'm all paid. <laughs> uh, okay. Now, in the news, there's been a lot of, uh, and some candidates have mentioned it, uh, about Harrisburg straightening, straightening out some of our tax problems and I would warn you to be leery of that uh, because I don't really believe in them. I don't believe in our governor. I don't believe in our state legislature at this time. And I think it will just turn around to be dumping on a small guy and have him paying everybody else's bills all the more. And uh, on 5H, we have a request for a review of, and I would also press for compensation of principals in these organizations. Uh, I've spoken to a few people and uh, certain uh, nonprofits uh, are not, they, they compensate their, their, uh, their elites uh, very highly. I've heard of, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of bonuses and so forth coming out, and uh, uh, it's really a profitable nonprofit. A recent uh, drug rehab that was supposed to be a nonprofit, not in our town, by the way, uh, paid $2.4 million to the executive, uh, the CEO of the company. So. Uh, I mean, that's a lot of money, $800,000 a year over mm -hmm. three years. And uh, also, I'd like to mention that it is an IRS requirement, no political involvement. And I'm very tired of seeing religious nonprofits coming out with their doctrines and trying to push them in the, po uh, the political arena. It's wrong. If you believe in something and you uh, abide by it, that's fine. But nobody's saying that murder should be legalized. So, you know, like uh, if they're against uh, uh, hormonal contraception or something, too bad. That's, uh, that type of involvement has to be stopped. It really has to be stopped. We can't have it. I have a question now, uh, tax office. Uh, when we had our $12 million debacle, and I'm asking the most senior member of council, who was the solicitor? The solicitor for the tax office? Yes. Uh, I believe Mr. Was it? When it was discovered, you mean? Before I think it, it was discovered. When it uh, went on. That would have been under Mrs. Uh, Vitale. Mr. McDowell was. Well, Mr. McDowell, the, the incident itself, the missing $12 million, occurred during his tenure yes. as tax collector. And I believe his solicitor was uh, Attorney Rinaldi. Uh -huh. It was not discovered until uh, Mrs. Vitale right. took office. Right. And her solicitor was... Um, McGovern, that's it. I was mm -hmm. going to say McGregor. But it was McGovern. independent of City Hall. Yes. Is what I'm saying. Okay. That's what I'd like to, uh, like, I wanted to bring out. Uh, I really uh, think there could be a conflict of interest there, as there was with the parking authority and so forth, with what's being pushed right now. Uh, 
I'd rather see the tax office have their own solicitor with, and hopefully somebody competent will be hired. Uh, now, uh, I'd like to, uh, after the primary especially, anybody that's a candidate for, uh, for office should attend these meetings, uh, especially for council, and try to get up to speed. I do see some people do attend. And they should get in here and listen and figure out what they want to do. Because it's always easy to say you could do a better job down the line. But uh, if you don't know what the job entails, then, well, how do you do a better job? And, uh, okay, uh, a few weeks ago I mentioned, uh, this is the Golden Parrot, dual tracking by banks. People request a modification on their loan. And a lot of them were military people. They were compensated at $125,000 uh, if their home was unreasonably uh, foreclosed. And today on the news, some of these people are getting $300, uh, non-military people. Uh, and what dual tracking is, I don't feel I explained it at that time. It's when you request a modification of your loan and then the bank sidelines and starts proceedings to confiscate your house and foreclose on it. And now these people have a considerable amount of money into their house and so forth, and uh, they've gotten $300 compensation under uh, Mr. DeMarco, who has done absolutely nothing in the housing authority, uh, uh, HUD, under HUD, uh, to uh, uh, help these people. And uh, once again, uh, uh, our Congress is in the news. They, uh, I have a suggestion. Uh, why don't we put the, uh, the uh, air traffic controllers only for incoming flights in D.C., and they can keep their cute little ditty box in, in Washington and do their jobs for a change. Thanks a lot. Bok, bok, bok. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to address council? Hey, Spryly, this is Grant and Fells, Gruntonians. Good evening. I see we're back with the library again uh, under your most, your B. Authorize the mirror and other appropriate official into a sub-guarantee agreement. Who owns the library? Well, the title or the deed to the library is in possession of the library authority. Why aren't they mentioned as any kind of a sub-guarantee? Why is the people of Scranton listed as a sub-guarantee instead of the people who actually own the library? Uh, the people of the city are not financially responsible for these repairs. It's a grant that was applied for uh, in order to make uh, very necessary repairs to the Albright. And basically, the city is just acting as um, a facilitator, if you will. So there is no financial responsibility placed on the Scranton taxpayers regarding this grant. There is a little notation saying that the Commonwealth could sue us. Now, should we be sued by the Commonwealth, even though there's some jargon in there, does the Scranton Authority, Scranton Library Authority, has the $500 million to pay off that, should it happen. I don't want to see us the same deal with the county with their bus terminal that they ended up paying a million and a half back. In other words, unless we have control over the repairs to make sure they're done according to the stipulations, we're liable. Somewhere along the line, we could be sued. Whether we have to pay or not, it doesn't really matter because we have to answer a lawsuit. And that costs money. you find some notations, and there's not too far in where it says that. It's not important, just so that you look into it and get the right jargon, even though they say there's some legal stipulations in there. But it said we could be. Um, I, if I may, I can read you a portion of 
a letter sent to counsel from Mr. Jack Finnerty, the director of the Scranton Public Library that was received just today. Uh, as you know, the grant was approved and we will receive the highest award possible, $500,000. These funds will assist with exterior masonry repairs estimated to cost $1.2 million and requiring 18 months to complete. While the library has the necessary funds to match the Keystone Grant Award, I am concerned by the very tight timetable for completing the project. All work must be done by the fall of 2014, and though this seems reasonably distant, the work required is significant, labor intensive, and weather limited. So time is of the essence. It is in this vein that I respectfully request that City Council do whatever it can to expedite the process. Specifically, I am requesting that the necessary legislation be passed in two weeks rather than the three weeks normally required. And that is certainly something that Council will take into consideration for uh, its meeting. But again, uh, the letter is stating that the library has the necessary matching funds and they want to begin the project ASAP so that they will uh, comply with the terms of the grant and the completion date that's been set. And how do we, why are we a sub-guarantee? Why do we need to be a sub-guarantee at all? We're guaranteeing that loan. In there, there's stipulations. That came from them people. Read the actual what's in the legislation. Well, it was most likely a requirement of the state government during the application process. Oh, maybe it is. But we do not own the library. The deed is not with the city. I wish they would return the deed and retire that authority, like you requested. Mm -hmm. Because I don't know. They say what they say. But you have no way of knowing. I didn't see any of you go down there and say, let me see the data on this. Let me see the money that's there. All you're doing is taking what they said. And I don't believe anybody anymore. I seen what the parking authority did. And you can't be just really carefree about anything. Nobody doesn't think the library has to be saved. I believe that's one of the best buildings in the whole city is that library. Right, if we had to pay one million, I would say we would raise taxes to do it. But it would be the city of Scranton doing it, not an authority. I don't trust authorities. I really don't. I have no faith in them. And you shouldn't put any faith in them either. You should make sure that everything is on, dotted on the line. If it is perfectly there, and this, even though the state said they could sue us, that they have an insurance to protect the city in case they do sue us. That's all you can ask with these things. And as far as the mirror goes, I don't trust anything he does either. And we found out many, many times over. I mean, that's uh, a truck that's selling food to the people in the office buildings that they have to stay away off. What is it? Uh, 300, 500 feet, which is over, what is that, a football and a half, stadium-wise, over 100 and some yards. I mean, how could you trust anything you send down? I wouldn't. I would check everything that he ever does, everything he ever says, or everything he can do. You know I didn't approve that authority in the very beginning. That was passed in the closing days, so you couldn't get in there and stop it. And we all know who was on the board when that was done. They gave away our library. So I, I can't forgive them anything that comes up. I'm very particular on it. Because I believe of anything in the city, that is probably one of the best things. It's better than City Hall. Actually, I would rather see them rip City Hall down than tear the library down. And I think a lot of people in the city would go that way too. I'm not going to get into a lot of things on to do it. I mean, the people are here for their jobs and so forth and all. But just remember, during the summer, people in them office buildings like to get a hot dog or whatever, sit on the courthouse, listen to the Bond concert. And that's basically where a lot of the activity goes with them food vendors. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Madam President, if I could. Yes, sir. On the comments on 
I don't know what item it is. This is the first time I've seen it tonight. Uh, I think it's 5A, which Mr. Spraglia was commenting on. The, this is a typical sub-grant agreement where the city of Scranton gets the funds from the state, and then it in turn makes that grant available to, to another recipient, mm -hmm. either to an authority or, in this case, the Scranton Public Library. Um, what it says is that there's an indemnification in here, I believe it's in Article 5, that in the event there's an audit and the funds aren't properly spent, the state would come back against the city. However, the library indemnifies the city. It's up to the library to defend that action uh, with the state as to how the funds, where they would say that they were properly spent. Uh, that's what it is. It's not as though the city is guaranteeing that <clears throat> the city as the grantee is responsible to see that the funds are properly spent in accordance with the grant agreement, which is then put on to the library. However, in looking at this, uh, I, I think it should be clarified by the law department um, why they have the Scranton Public Library. Uh, there's no other mention of, of the uh, who it is. Is it a nonprofit corporation? Uh, it just says Scranton Public Library. Um, the, when the Albright Trust, when the Albrights created the trust for the Scranton Public Library, there was a, I believe it was nine trustees uh, that were appointed uh, by the, uh, some by the city and I think some by the court. It's been a long time since I saw that document. It's been years. Uh, but I, I think it should be definitely, it should definitely be clarified as to who we are entering into the contract with, not just the Scranton Public Library. Uh, I don't know if that's, if there is such a thing. Mm -hmm. um, there's, the Scranton, there's the Scranton Public Library Authority, I believe, that owns the building. Mm -hmm. However, they just own the building, and I believe that this grant is it's going to go into the building. They should be a guarantor, I mean, at least on the indemnification. Mm -hmm. And also, there's still the Board of Trustees, I believe, that has fundraisers that gets monies and operates the library independent of the ownership of the library. Mm -hmm. So I, I believe that, that not, I believe it's my recommendation that council uh, should have the solicitor's department uh, clarify who's going to execute this agreement. I believe it should be both of them. It should be the Scranton Public Library authority, if that's the proper name of it, since they own the building and the improvements are going to go into the building. Mm -hmm. And also, if it's the Board of Trustees or if it's another nonprofit corporation that actually operates the library, I'm not familiar with that, but mm -hmm. they should be the ones that should be indemnifying the city. Okay. And not just the Scranton Public Library. I, I don't, you know, or, ordinarily it'd say a nonprofit corporation, a Pennsylvania nonprofit corporation. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I, didn't, I didn't see who's going to sign this, but... And this is why solicitor used... Very good says, you should Public be Library writing the by legislation Brian J. Linehan, for Esquire, the city. And John R. Affinity, Library Director. Uh, but I think both of those, that, you know, that should be clarified. Okay. And Mrs. Craig, if you could get that out in the morning, please, to Mayor Doherty and the law office so that... Uh, we can have these corrections made. Thank you, Solicitor Hughes. Thank you. Is there anyone else who cares to address council? Good evening, council. Um, Good evening. Good evening. Um, in regards to the city pools, a, long, a while back, the Scranton Lackawanna Taxpayers and Citizens Association wanted to uh, get involved in, um, you know, bringing the city and the school board together, and the, of course the mayor to try to open these pools with some volunteers who might be willing to do the repairs to the pools. But it's my understanding that these city pools need liners. I don't know if that's correct. I mean, somebody have to really research that, but that's my understanding, that they leak an awful lot of water. That's what I've been told. Um, the other thing is, 
You know, there's been some discussion here today about the tax office. And in my own opinion, which is probably separate from what other people may believe, I think that the city solicitor should do it because I think he should protect the city's revenue. And I think he'd be the most qualified attorney for that office. And I'm not interested in any argument that the, the tax collector may have because in a community as stressed as ours is, I mean, maybe it's time to start following the law instead of going off on a tangent and then wondering later on how we're going to contain everything. Because if I'm correct a while back, the FBI came in there, I think, and investigated that office, so if I'm sure, uh, you know, and I think they said incompetence wasn't prosecutable. But my point is, you know, once they make mistakes and the revenue's lost or co-mingled or misplaced, what do you say to a city that's starved for revenue, that can't wait until a month from now to figure out what they're owed and what they're not owed? And um, I always was under the understanding that when you run for an office, whether it be the magistrate or the tax collector or anything else, the Commonwealth will educate you on a, and give you classes so that you can run those departments and be, you know, knowledgeable. Um, so I'm a little concerned. But the question I have today, well, two of them, I'd like to ask if the city's going to move forward with anything for Mr. Walsh in recognition of him. I don't know if where, where that stands or if anything's even really been accomplished in regards to that. And the other thing I'd like to ask Mr. Joyce, if I could, is um, where is the city's recovery plan at and what's been realized and what hasn't? And do you see a shortfall in revenue this year? Well, right now, um, because of the commuter tax, there should be a shortfall, obviously, because we're not going to receive that $2.5 million in revenue. I. Um, I have spoke with the administration about the shortfall that's projected and ways that uh, that shortfall could be made up. They've brought some ideas forth, um, such as uh, the advanced sale of delinquent real estate taxes to cover the shortfall for this year as, as a possible option, and they're also discussing other options as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I... I don't have a copy of that with me today, but I thought we were relying on other things to happen too besides that. But, you know, I just would like to say that, um, you know, we definitely have to find some solutions to our problems, and I do hope the pools open this summer, and, you know, appreciate your time. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Good evening, Council. Good evening. Mary Chilipko, resident city of Scranton. Good evening. Um, first of all, I amended my remarks. I would like to commend the members, all of the members of the crime watches, the neighborhood groups, and all of their efforts and how tirelessly they're all working for the betterment of the city. Um, and that includes you as well. Well, I've, I've been around a while, and it's the first time. <coughs> Maybe the first time that I haven't seen politics as the first item on the agenda for the neighborhood groups. Um, it seems a lot of the groups now have left egos at the door and are truly working for the betterment of the city. I wish I could say that for some of the city officials. It's a shame. Uh, Pinebrook will be having, before I get into that, Pinebrook will be having a cleanup this Saturday, May 4th. We will meet at 829 Kapausa Avenue, and any help. Um, would be appreciated by anyone. And there again, we go back to what city time, officials. I'm sorry, what time does that start? Oh, 9 o'clock, Jack, I'm okay. sorry. Um, there we go back to city officials. We've all been slapped in the face by Mark Seitzinger. I just want you to know that. It was an insult to the neighborhood, it was an insult to city council, mm -hmm. and a farce by the mayor and Mr. Seitzinger, the inspection of the rooming houses in my neighborhood. The neighbors were out there, there was not a health inspector, there was a gentleman um, who spoke with the neighbors and expressed some of the same concerns we did and said the smell of cat urine when you went into the building was, you know, almost drove him out. But that wasn't his, and it was understandable, you know, it wasn't his area of expertise. I don't know. I think that would be a health inspector. But if any of you were there or any of you saw what transpired, it, it was disgusting. So I don't know. Do we pursue it? Do we ask? I've asked for more complete inspections 
there have been, as I know of, there have been no fire inspections. The fire inspectors were not at these buildings. And you're talking about, in the two buildings next to my, near my home, 40 rooms, 24 in the Melba and 16 in the building behind it. That's 40 rooms, which can allow two tenants per room. That's 80 tenants, a possibility for 80 tenants. I think it's a disgrace. Oh, it is. And since I received a copy of your email, mm -hmm. I again ask Mr. Seitzinger, I tried to pin him down to when it's going to be inspected by each individual that is required, et cetera, all of your concerns. I've still heard nothing. So Mrs. Craig, um, I don't know if this is actually going to work, but we have it nothing won't. to lose by trying it. It won't. If it's only we made. Could, if we could try to have Mr. Seitzinger and maybe uh, a fire inspector come to a public caucus and if you would like to participate also? Well, or I've been at a meeting with Mr. Seitzinger. We sat there. Um, Councilman Rogan was there as well for, what, two and a half hours? And it was pointless. It was all nonsense. Uh, nothing was accomplished as a result of that. Councilman well, Rogan maybe, was there. maybe, you know, if we have the, uh, we could arrange to have the stenographer there and the television and we get on record the statements okay. that are being made. I would suggest, Ms. I'm sorry, Mrs. Evans, I would, um, I would suggest a health inspector as well. Okay. Um, I think it was building or mechanical that was there. They used to come in a group. Now everybody's too busy or mm -hmm. doing something else or I, I don't know where they are. Well, let's try place. to bring them all to the table publicly and get to the bottom of this. As far as the pools, I did read the article. I would like to see Kapaus Avenue someday reopened but it's in such disrepair. I, I don't know if that's possible. The last time I spoke to the mayor a year or so ago, he said it would probably be bulldozed and made into a park. There we have it. Um, as far as the food trucks, I think we should just leave them alone. I watched this lady come up here tonight. I never saw anybody so happy with their job in Scranton. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was amazing. I, will, I think I'll be down there tomorrow. <laughs> I will. I, I don't. Some of it, I think, is motivated by greed and with the brick and mortar. And it's only my own opinion. I'm not that as attuned as some other people are on that issue. And I, I believe that a lot of people in some of those restaurants were given some free rides along the way by the administration. And it's only my opinion. But I suggest to that lady you stay your ground, stand your ground, and there are people that will stand behind you. Look at the neighbors here. Look at your neighbors and the people that have finally, myself included, decided to stand up for what we think is right. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Council. Thank, Thank you. you. Is there anyone else? <coughs> Good evening, Scranton City Council. Bill Jackwood, South Scranton resident. Good evening. Uh, last week, uh, after listening to the, the explanation about the, I guess, the meters being removed on Mulberry Street and, uh, and the University of Scranton uh, being allowed to park on the street, basically, f for not using, you know, not using any meters, uh, the people who asked the questions were not satisfied with the answers. Uh, it sounded like some deals were made somewhere along the line. And we're always fighting with the university, but it seems like we're always giving the university breaks. So uh, again, you know, uh, there's a lot of people upset over this, and I'm just a messenger, and I'm just letting you know that. Uh, now, as far as combining the Supreme Court payout with the retirement and health care loan payout, is that going to save the taxpayers any money? Well, there was money saved. Uh, the original Supreme Court payout was to be in well, excess. I, yeah, with the firefighters, right? Yeah, but I'm just saying, combining them yeah, now, please. will that save the taxpayers' money, or would it still be $22.5 million that we have to borrow? That's my question. It would still be $22.5 okay. million. Dollars. Okay, now, there will probably be another tax increase this year, and... and the five members of council right now will probably have to be approving that. Uh, 
I hope it's a small one, and uh, I hope it's the last one. Uh, when he Scranton elected officials proposed renegotiation of city contracts, because like I said last week, uh, we're paying over a million dollars biweekly in payroll, and uh, we can't afford that. It's not sustainable, it's not affordable. So are we gonna do anything about this? I mean, there's eight more months left in this year before we have a new mayor, we have a new Scranton City Council president. So are we gonna, are we gonna do something about this? We the can't afford it. The city council does not have the authority I, I to didn't engage say you, in negotiations. That I, hope has not, to, I hope my time's not being used. That has to come from the mayor. Okay, that's, I hope my time's not being used. I understand that, Mrs. Evans. I understand it very clearly. But I also understand that you're an elected official. City council are elected officials. And I understand that you have an open door policy with the mayor. So we should be in negotiation on a daily basis, if need be, working on these problems because the city is in dire financial straits. Do we agree on that or do we disagree? I agree, but I believe that your message needs to be sent to the mayor. It has been over and over and over again, okay? But also, council are elected officials. I understand your legislative bottle, but you are elected officials. And we were told that if the supermajority was elected, things were gonna change. Things haven't changed for the better. Things have changed for the worse. That's all I'm trying to say. Well, uh, actually, if you didn't have the supermajority sitting here, right now, you would have had a 124% tax increase instead of a 22%. So believe me, it's a very good thing that this supermajority sat here. Uh, that's, that's your opinion, but there's a, lot of, there's a lot of citizens and residents that don't agree with that. Well, that's and, probably because... You know, I didn't come here to argue with you, Mrs. Evans, so no, I hope, I'm you're, not, not, I'm not I hope you're not using my time. Go no, right ahead. No, no, I'm not using your time. You've always been given ample, okay. more than ample time. Go ahead, I'm take sure. all the time you need to. But, no, but I think the point is that most people misunderstand completely what's gone on here. That, and you should know because you've been here as well as I've been here. You know where all the trouble came from, just like I know. Well, I understand it came and, from McGough. And it's not a matter of pointing McGough fingers. Can tell you that's where it came from. No, no, I'm not going to point fingers. I'm just going to say that an administration borrowed and borrowed and borrowed more money than has ever been done in the history of the city of Scranton, and that was prior to 2012. And despite my best efforts, it did not stop. It never stopped until these people came on board. Right. Now, the newspaper, and even many of the people running for office, like to attribute all these problems to a lack of communication or an animosity between council and the mayor. And nothing, believe me, nothing is further from the truth. Oh, that it were that simplistic. Then we could believe new people are going to come in and save the day. That's not the problem. And I think anyone running for office needs to look at the history of the Doherty administration, see what's really happened see what happened when there was communication and, you know, working together when a city was about to fall over the fiscal cliff into bankruptcy. Everyone worked together. Everyone found a middle ground. So, you know, I think it's, I think, you know, everyone has a right to his own opinion. Certainly you do. I do, everyone here does, but no one has a right to their own version of the truth. The truth is what it is. Yeah, but the truth of the matter is that the recovery plan was a failure and did not work because nothing there, it was all vision, nothing was, nothing was set in stone there, it was all visions, tax, commuter taxes, so on and so forth. Majority of the people realized that that wasn't going to work, but it was approved anyway. But the point that most people are asking, and the point that I'm asking is, when is this going to be resolved? You know, like I said, we're going to, eventually we're going to have a new city council next year. We're going to have a new mayor next year. Uh, you know, nobody wants to hear the word bankruptcy. 
But right now, if we don't solve our problems, if we don't get the loan and we don't get the money that we need, there are no other options available. All the other options have been averted, and people are worried, okay? Mm -hmm. People are losing their jobs. People are, uh, their paychecks are getting smaller. But yet taxes continue to go up. And it's not only the city government that's raising taxes. It's the state government. It's the federal government. It's everybody else. Now the water company is getting ready to hit us with another raise. The people cannot afford this. They're looking for solutions. They're looking, looking for resolutions to our problems. Words are nothing but words, okay? They're nothing but thoughts. They don't mean anything until they're placed into action. And so far the action has not resolved Scranton City problems. Now, my opinion is the problem we have is our payroll is too high. That's all I'm asking. Are we going to do something about our payroll? I understand there's union contracts and negotiations would have to be made. I'm saying we need to start those negotiations now. Not wait eight months from now when we have a new mayor and we have a new city council. We need to start working on these problems now because the debt's going higher and higher and higher. Now, as far as I know, we still haven't gotten a commitment for this loan. Okay, I'm not privy to all the information, but my, I, I'm being told that we still don't have the money coming to us. We might not get this money. What's going to happen then if that does happen? Come 30 June, come 30 October, if we don't have the money, what happens? How do we get out of this problem? How do we get out of this mess? We rely, we have seven elected officials in this city. We rely upon those seven elected officials. They campaigned. They took our campaign contributions and they asked us to vote for them. And they said they were going to get us out of this mess. We're still in the mess. When are we going to get out of this mess? It's been 21 years. And people are upset. I'm not the only one. For some reason, people come to me because they know I'll come here and I'll come talk. And I'll express their, their opinion for them. But you know what? That's all I'm asking. When are we going to get some help? Just a quick response to that. The problems, as I said, didn't occur overnight. This is more than a decade of issues that became more and more and more swollen until the financial house of cards collapsed. And you're not going to see as much as you want it and I want it, you're not going to see a full solution this year because it's going to take years to address what all the damage that has been done and get the city back on firm sound financial footing it's not going to happen overnight and it's not going to be completed this year this will go on well through the next four years and likely beyond that. So there are no quick, easy, simple fixes here. It's been very difficult. And everyone has been working to do the best thing for the people of this city. And that means protecting you from massive, massive tax increases. Doing everything we can to make sure that you receive your services and that you are not choked by tax increases. And on that note, I'll just ask to, if there are any more speakers. Just to comment a little bit further on that. <laughs> Pell made it quite clear to me in the last time I spoke to them, uh, Jerry Cross, uh, executive director for Pell said, the city of Scranton could get out of distress status right now if it wants to. Just increase taxes by about 150 percent. We're trying to offset that with alternative revenue sources such as a commuter tax, such as looking for increased payments in lieu of taxes from our nonprofits, such as pushing for legislation through the state that would help us be able to go after some of the nonprofit institutions for some form of payment. What we really need and what this city really needs is state assistance. The Local Tax Enabling Act that was put together in, I believe it was 1960 or 64, I'm not sure what year, basically dictates what we can do and what we can't do. 
I believe that the, that the residents of Scranton are overtaxed, and that's, and that's a large problem because the outlying areas are taxed at a far less rate than the residents in the city of Scranton are. Now, it's, and it's not like Scranton is a major hub like New York City or Philadelphia where it provides a great convenience if you work in the city to live in the city. Most people that live in Taylor, Dunmore, Dixon City, Old Forge, or Troop could commute to the city within 10 minutes to 15 minutes. But it's the, the problem lies within the way that the state government is set up and the way the state government is functioning. We need their help. We need their assistance. We need our state senators and, and uh, state reps to fight for us in Harrisburg. And I, I believe that bringing them in was one of the first steps towards that fight. But without their help and without changes to state laws, it'll be very limited as far as what the city of Scranton will be able to do outside of property tax increases. Um, thank you, Mr. Joyce. And uh, if I might just quickly add, besides the more than one public caucus we had with our state elected officials, um, I had many meetings with them in council's office. And they're well aware of our problems. They agree we have many problems. But no one is willing to step up to the plate and help. No one has done anything. And no one has committed to doing anything. And the only reason I'm saying this is because the people that are going to be leading the city on into the future, they have to be aware uh, this, is, this is all their responsibility. They have to make the choices and decisions because I frankly don't see the state of Pennsylvania riding to the rescue of Scranton anytime soon. So the responsibility, the good, the bad, and the ugly of it falls on those who want to lead this city. Is there anyone else? All right, Council. My name is Pat Fenerty. I'm a Scrantonian, believe it or not. From Scranton High School? Yeah, indeed. And I remember you, Mrs. Evans. And I remember you. Yeah. I'm still tall. Yes, you are. Were yeah. you in Kelly's class? I was. Yeah. My How's you doing, goodness. by the way? I haven't seen you in a long time. It's been a long time. Now this you're in This is my first man. time in the chambers. Welcome. Yeah. I've been a long time uh, follower, though, of the program, uh, as I'll call it, watching. Uh, I mean no disrespect uh, disrespect you guys have a tough gig and I'm gonna say that you have a tough gig and uh, and I'm gonna follow up what was just said with something a little lighter um, but I was moved to come here tonight and by moved I mean not moved about six months ago I bought a stopwatch at Dick Sporting Goods for like 17 bucks and uh, I bought it to time the, the street lights of Scranton because I was amazed at how long they were and as you just said, um, you're referring to Scranton not being a hub, such as New York, or Philadelphia. And as me being a borderline young adult, as I am, borderline young adult, um, and choosing to live here, as I do, and I'm involved in the arts, uh, which isn't very easy. We're not Nashville, we're not Austin, we're not New York, um, but we're trying. Um, it is a struggle for me to uh, see when I'm on the corner of Wyoming and Green Ridge, I'm waiting 58 seconds. So I timed that, and I started it as a kind of a joke, but then I realized that this is something I kind of want to get into. Uh, 58 seconds for Wyoming and Green Ridge. You guys with me on that one? 58 seconds, which doesn't seem that long, but it actually is. So then I did this as a joke, and my friends were laughing at me and everything like that. And then the week after I bought this stopwatch, the article came in that the new lights were coming in and they were getting synced. So I was like, I was a little upset by that because I was finally going to do something and uh, just have a little bit of a, a joke, I guess. But um, even though it's something I believe in, and now that the new lights are here, they're longer. 
and they don't run from green into green into green. I time the light that's at uh, Adams and Linden, and it's a minute and 40 seconds when you're on Adams. That's a long time, a minute and 40. So here's my solution. I don't know what you guys are going to do about everything you were just talking about. You guys will figure it out. Um, and you're going to hear about it. You guys are just going to keep talking about it. You're going to hear about it. You'll figure it out. But what I'm here to say is that if maybe what we do have, if not the attraction that New York City, Philadelphia, even Baltimore has, uh, perhaps if we were to sink these lights and make this town easy to get around, we could have like a saying that's like, come to Scranton. You can, you know, it's easy to move around. We'll get you there. You can, you can actually, you know, move around instead of waiting a minute and 40. It's laughable almost. And I am saying this in a somewhat joking manner, but I also believe it in my heart that it is hard sometimes to know that you're just going from Greenridge to Southside. How many times have you gone from Greenridge to Southside? Can I get a round of applause for that? Thank you. So you're going from Greenridge to make it easier to go from Greenridge to Southside. You know, they're new lights. They have the sensors. Um, so, uh, is there? Do you guys have anything about? Uh, well, can I say this? So you guys are going to do something about that? I think uh, I don't. I, I believe it was a meeting or two ago where we had uh, discussed this with PennDOT. Okay. They're they're still not completed with their with the setup. So, okay. Uh, they were supposed to try and have them synchronized by the end of April, but I believe it was pushed back to the end of May. If I'm not mistaken, okay. I have the same problem, and yeah. I joke. We're I, out there. We're all driving. From where I live, I could get to Geisinger, Wyoming Valley quicker than I could get to Geisinger, Scranton. Right. So it's, it's crazy. But it, but it is true. They're not synced yet. Okay. Uh, so hopefully that will relieve you a little bit. Right. Because well, if I they do sync them all. and they're still as bad, then I'll complain. But <laughs> right. But I know I've sat at, at, at a few myself, and I yeah. said, my God. Oh, and they're running you right red into red. Yeah. Um, I've got other things going but I on guess in my once life. I've got other things in happening in my life. Don't you know? I do. Sure. But right. this is something that's. This is. is a daily. I, this is. And I, I wasn't going to come here. It was the one light that I timed for a minute and forty minutes. That I was like, I just have to go. I well, agree Mr. Finnerty, I would suggest that um, you continue to time the lights, okay. particularly after uh, PennDOT appears to have concluded its enormous project. Yeah. And if these lights are still as problematic as they currently are, or let's say the, the uh, problems have been alleviated only slightly, right. then I'd like you to come back and let us know. But in addition to that, I think you know, the, the people of Scranton, even the people traveling Scranton, need to flood PennDOT with complaints okay. until they do the job properly. Because again, we're chasing more people out of the city. Right. So it seems to me in all the years that I've, I've served as an elected official, the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Right. The complaints, you know, people when they, they join together right. for a united purpose and they want change, they can affect that change through being vocal in numbers. So, like I'm saying, let us know, we'll go after them, but we also need your help, everyone's help, to bombard them with complaints right. so that we have our lights properly set. Well, I'm going to need you guys to go ahead and make this a priority, okay? So let's forget about everything else that was said. Um, <laughs> don't worry about these problems. Let's go, ahead and make this, let's go ahead and make this a priority. <laughs> like I said, I've been watching for years. Uh, I, was, I remember the deed for the pool, NAOG. That was a great one. Uh, I know you guys hear a lot, and uh, you know, so I'm, I don't mean to come down at all. I, I, mean, I would just like to add, and yeah. it's funny, I had the same conversation with a few residents in Southside over the weekend. Um, when you go to a big city, and as was mentioned, we're not a, that, a huge city, but it seems that they understand how to make traffic move efficiently. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Um, all the streets will have a green at the same time yeah, and all the street, avenues. Broad Street in Philly is yep. doing it. And, and then it'll go to the avenues. The avenues will right. have greens. And I travel from, from West Scranton to South Scranton all the time and for work. Sure you do. I, you uh, live here. 
I, I always, you know, I've r been running into problems now with the expressway with, yeah, the, oh, the, expressway. with the issue with the bridge being out and yeah. it, it's oh, the frustrating. Bridge is out? <laughs> <laughs> it, it's certainly frustrating and we just need to use common sense. Right. And another issue that wasn't brought up, cars waste a lot of gas sitting at lights idling. They do. Mm -hmm. You get zero miles to the gallon when you're sitting at a light. That'd be a good point for me to make, <laughs> like if I was doing. And another yeah. thing too. You think gas is? Do you think gas is free? That was me doing my. <laughs> <laughs> but a, a lot of European countries actually, it's illegal to idle. You have to shut your car off. And really? I'm not, I'm not condoning. I'm not saying that we have to do that here. But it yeah. does. It does waste a lot yeah, of gas. Is. And if we can get traffic to move more efficiently, not only will people be happier because it won't take as long to get from place to place. But we also may have uh, you know, a little more gas in your tank at the end of the week. Happier Scrantonians, which is Absolutely. all we want to be. I won't eat up any more of your time. I just want to tell you that uh, you got to check out what's, ha what's happening on Mifflin and Linden. Linden Street Bridge and Mifflin. No one's crossing that bridge, but you're waiting at Mifflin for a good minute and a half. And the last thing I'll say is I recently took Mead Street for the first time off of uh, the Dunmore exit. And if you take Mead uh, when you get off the Dunmore exit, Mead does unbelievable things. Mead. I don't know if anyone's ever gone down Mead, but it takes you by the highway and then it turns into an alley and it dumps you out close to the tank in Dunmore. That has nothing to do with the whole thing I just said. I just <laughs> thought that I would share that with Scranton and the viewers. Uh, so thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Oh, good evening, Council Marie Schumacher, city resident and taxpayer. Good evening. Good evening. Um, as a start off with 5B and C, I hope that you will be able to uh, stay on whoever it's required to make the changes that are required, if they're even required, so that that can be expedited. This has been a great year for the, the library. It was just a few short weeks ago on April 12th that they dedicated the uh, the elevator that goes up to the second floor and to the reference department and you know that's a first time now that disabled persons could use it and that was big and and this getting the outside fixed which is in dire straits is is really required and whatever we can do to help and um, I did circulate a number of petitions with other people in this room to keep the library here and I'll tell you now I am glad that it's in the hands of the uh, Scranton Public Library Authority because if anything happens to this city as far as being going into bankruptcy if the worst should happen that's an asset that's at the authority and we hopefully would not be forced to sell it or do something that I or hopefully it's protected so um, that's it on 5B and C. I hope that it's passed finally next week. Uh, on 5D, does that include, is that restricted to food or does it include things such as the flower tents that pop up around uh, flower giving holidays that obviously compete with, with brick and mortar florists? Um, I don't point. see it. Pardon? I don't see a whole lot of difference, and nobody has a problem with them, so I don't know why we have a problem with the food trucks. So I would like to know that, though. I, I did come down today, but the backup wasn't ready, so I'll try to check that out before next week myself. Uh, next is 6A. I still have a, a serious problem with taking the money f away from the vacant property review committee and from the demolition of hazardous structures. Blight is with us big time and I don't think we can afford to give up any money for the or any any funding that we could use toward the demolition. And as far as the vacant property review committee, uh, I don't think we've used we there's been a number of enabling, not nearly far enough yet, but enabling pieces of legislation over the last five years and I don't think this city has taken advantage of any of them and they all involve going to court so it's expensive and we need we need to keep that money in the vacant property review committee so they can have the, the legal aid that they need to start moving some of these properties 
Uh, we have not, I don't, to the best of my knowledge, we have not gone after any conservatorships. And Act 90 of 2010 allowed us to go after absentee landlords and extradite them here and take personal property extended beyond the property that they own here to recover what we've put into it or what needs to be done. And we haven't used any of those. That's three years, five years. We need to, we need to start acting on those things. Uh, 5-H. Uh, I'm, I'm a little confused as to why that's on here tonight. It seems to me that this was done a couple weeks ago or maybe even a couple months ago. And, and it was returned by the, the county because I believe the municipality is supposed to do the five-point check. And I know Greg Evans has talked about the, using some of the university people or the nonprofits to help us with services in lieu of payments, not just payments in lieu of services. And I don't know why. I mean, it, somebody could learn GuideStar really fast and, and look up most of these things, go out on their own, and I think it would have been a great project for an intern to do. And then just turn that, whatever the municipality finds, over to the county assessor's office and let them go from there. Um, so I, I, I really think we should reach out to the nonprofits and ask if anybody's willing to help do that review. And then empty lots, the ones that can't be maintained. I mean, they're already starting to grow. And could we take some money maybe out of the contingency fund and use herbicide on some of these lots so that at least we keep the vegetation down where they can't be maintained? I'll have the rest next week. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else that wishes to address council? Excuse me. I was going to say, Madam President, I just realized she's not there. Um, in reviewing the ordinance on the food trucks, the, the, there's the two new definition of a food truck and a food cart. Uh, the old definition of peddler, in my opinion, does not cover the flower tents. So I think that the, it, that'd be up to council where we could request the solicitor's office to take a look at this in draft language if, if it's council's desire to cover the uh, uh, tents where they sell the flowers. Yes. Uh, they are not peddlers. The peddler is someone who goes door to door. And of course they're in one spot. So I mean that's not covered. In, in, in this ordinance it might be covered somewhere else but it's not covered in this ordinance. Thank you, Mr. Hughes. Does anyone else wish to address council? 5A, motions. Mr. McGough, do you have any comments or motions? Yes, thank you. Um, first of all, regarding the food truck, uh, uh, a little bit of clarification I think uh, is needed uh, as far as council and the uh, food trucks and uh, that whole thing is concerned. Uh, number one, nobody on council ever advocated for the removal of food trucks from the downtown. As a matter of fact, one, as a matter of fact, one evening, um, questions were asked of each of us, I believe, as to whether we believe that they should be removed from the downtown. And every one of the members of council that was here said no, that they should remain. Um, I, I think we're all in favor. You know, council as a as a whole is in favor of the competition that is provided and uh, the service that is provided by those vendors. Um, as a matter of fact, council has advocated, um, and Mrs. Evans mentioned last week, for dialogue between the brick and mortar um, restaurants and the mobile vendors. Uh, and through Scranton tomorrow, I believe that we had created a conduit for that dialogue. Um, what I didn't want to see happen with this was to turn this into a media event uh, where, where this argument was being played out through the newspapers, the radio stations, and wherever else. Uh, this is something, I'll speak for myself, I know nothing about the restaurant business other than the fact that I go there and eat once in a while. I don't know how it affects how they affect one another, 
and I'm not sure that anybody on council has you know that experience it would be best that this situation be resolved by the interested parties and that is what Scranton tomorrow is trying to do by setting up these discussions we as a council can amend the legislation to meet the collective desires of all those that are involved um, and, and I think that we would all like to do that if if the vendors uh, the, the merchants can decide on something that's workable for all concerned I think we would be more than happy to amend the legislation and to make that happen um, the media is not going to solve this situation or resolve this situation only the interested parties are and um, I, I encourage them all of them to use the mechanism that's been provided um, by council and through Scranton tomorrow to get this resolved so that it's not a problem any further and that we can all enjoy the services provided by all of the vendors that um, exist in downtown Scranton um, second thing uh, although a pass last week uh, there's been discussion about the parking around I'll say general dynamics I'm not sure if that's the correct name anymore either I'm, but um, in talking with people um, after we had started to talk about the idea of permit parking with the number of layoffs that they've had there uh, they don't need on-street parking any longer all of their employees can park comfortably within the confines uh, of the um, the grounds and to pursue I think to pursue permit parking in that case would would really just be not as bad but close to as bad as putting parking meters there um, there's no reason to do it um, I I've kind of come to uh, the same conclusion that Mr. Rogan did and has um, stated that the best thing at this point in time I believe is to simply take down the no parking signs and just you know it's open parking uh, and and in an emergency if that emergency should occur that we have voted on should that occur then we can create some type of emergency signage you know at that time but uh, as of now um, I don't think it's in our best interest to pursue you know permit parking there it's probably in everyone's best interest to just go to open parking as it was many years ago um, as far as the traffic signals I've had a, a number of people contact me about all kinds of issues with the traffic signals um, and driving through the downtown the other day uh, I agree it, it, it's a disaster trying to get from one end of the city to the other um, with bridges closed and with you know the traffic signals with construction with it, it, it's a nightmare trying to move around the city um, there, there is a hopefully within the next month or so um, PennDOT or who's ever doing the traffic signalization um, will listen to what we've had to say uh, about you know various you know the flow of traffic but the biggest complaint I've had is about as the gentleman said the the length of some of the signals is incredible um, all kinds of complaints about sitting at traffic lights forever uh, and that's something that they should be able to adjust quickly um, easily it, it's within their um, you know power to do that um, and the last thing as it comes up the the Linden Street Bridge um, I look at that as a priority item um, I, I use the analogy of you know at my uh, is it West Linden Street or West whatever what's the one Lackawanna, Lackawanna. 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 I'm sorry too many bridges to, <laughs> to worry about um, 
I use the analogy of my own home. I, you know, I need a new porch. I need new sidewalks. I need a new roof. I've got to make a decision as to which one is, at this point in time, the most important with the limited resources that I have. Um, and we're looking at it, I think, the same way in the city. What is the priority? In ter what is our greatest priority? Um, and at this point in time, as I look at where this money is coming from, are those other, wh are those other sources of revenue important to the city? Yes. But I think that, again, going with the, the movement of traffic and the mobility through the city, we need to get some of these streets and bridges, whatever, repaired as quickly as possible so that, um, as the, was written in the newspaper, that Scranton doesn't become an island where, you know, you can't move at all. Um, so I, I'm in favor of, you know, the transfer of the, the funds as it exists. I, I think that the, the bridge is the, the bigger priority. And that's all I have for this evening. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Rogan, do you have comments or motions tonight? Yes, thank you. Um, one announcement that I forgot um, to mention. Um, tomorrow from 5 to 7 at Whiskey Dicks in downtown Scranton, there will be a fundraiser for policing the city. And all proceeds um, will go for community events. Um, and that's tomorrow night from 5 to 7. Um, I guess I'll start off also with um, the food trucks, since that seems to be the hot issue of the night and the end of the week. And let me just start off by giving you a little of my philosophy on these type of issues. I, I believe that I believe in free markets. I believe in competition. I believe in capitalism. And that's what I like about this country and in our city and our state, where somebody can buy a truck and come up with great food and go downtown, pay the city a fee, and be very successful and, and make a good living doing it and provide a good product to residents of the city and the workers of the downtown. Um, there's also other benefits of having the food trucks in the downtown as well, and this is just um, one story that somebody mentioned to me, and it was actually when, on a day when they were outside of the city. Um, somebody mentioned to me over the week that they're a big fan of one of the food trucks, and they, you know, they travel maybe once or twice a week to wherever they are to, to get dinner or lunch. So they, they happened to be at the Viewmont Mall that day. So he went up, got his food, they, you know, they ate it quick in the car, and they said, well, let's go to the mall. He went up going to the mall and spending $100 in the shops in the mall. And these food trucks are being patronized not only by Scranton residents, but by residents out of town as well. And if we could bring more foot traffic into the downtown, it could help brick and mortar businesses as well in the downtown. Um, I also have some other questions about these ordinances. Um, a big one I have is who will enforce them? Um, th will this be another burden put on our licensing and inspections department? You know, if there's a call put in that, you know, a food truck is, is within, you know, whatever the, the, the footage is, um, whether it's 100 or 500, 250, if, if they get that call, are they supposed to go down there with, you know, that rolling tape measure and measure it out? I, I think our inspectors have a lot more important work to be doing. Um, so, so that's a big issue as well. And finally, the one issue I do think that does need to be addressed right now with the food trucks is regarding the fees. Um, I think that the, f the fees and or taxes that food trucks are paying should be comparable to brick and mortar businesses. Um, I know it's a little bit more difficult to decide on what those rates should be because you know property taxes are based on a square footage, the mercantile tax on the sales. Um, these trucks aren't always in the city. Um, and from talking to some of the owners of the trucks, they've agreed that the fees are too low right now. And they, and they agreed that you know, paying an additional fee isn't a problem for them in, in fairness to, to be on an equal playing field with the brick and mortar businesses. And for me, that's what I'm hoping will come out of all this. Um, as I stated before, I, I won't vote for any legislation that will ban these type of food trucks from the downtown area where they do most of their business. Um, I do support making the playing field fair where brick and mortar businesses and food trucks will have the same playing field and whoever has the best product will then be the best, you know, the most successful business. And that's, that's how free market should work. 
And I, I'm very hopeful that the talks between the brick and mortar business owners and the food truck owners um, will reach a settlement that could pass this council by 5-0, be signed by the mayor, and everyone's happy. Um, that's my hope. I hope that that agreement can be made. Um, as I said, I, I oppose some of what's in this legislation now, but there are some issues that do need to be addressed, so I will vote to introduce the legislation to see what comes out of those talks. Um, I have spoken to a few of the food truck owners. Um, I haven't had any calls yet from the brick and mortar businesses. I'm sure they will be coming. I'm willing to listen to both sides. And uh, I'm very hopeful that an agreement will be reached in, uh, in the short future that, that can work for everyone. And, uh, and everyone could you know, carry on with their business. Um, next, the West Lackawanna Bridge. Um, I did have a, an email conversation with Linda Abley and I pr everyone was provided with a copy. Um, I think the best course of action, and we'll see if, if everyone agrees, is um, how does everyone else on the board feel about having Ms. Abley in for a caucus to discuss if these are the best programs or the only programs where these funds could be taken from? I have no problem. I would agree, I agree. to that as well. Mr. McGough? That's fine. Okay. So, Mrs. Craig, could we please set that up with Ms. Abley? I, um, she already agreed, you know, but I did want to bring that up to my colleagues as well. And hopefully we can have that and see if there are any other options. Um, as I said last week, I also have concerns about where the funding is coming from. Um, specifically for me, demolition of hazardous structures and um, some of the neighborhood groups, that the Falcons, um, they do great work and would hate to have to, to take those funds away if they can be used by those, by those organizations. And actually on the way to the council meeting tonight, I did see two police officers um, looking at the area of the sidewalk in question. Can I ask? Sure. So I called that in, and that's why we're here. Thank you. And I, I know that the residents probably couldn't hear, but what um, Karen Foster from the West Side Neighborhood Watch mentioned, she called it into the police today that there is a four-foot section of the sidewalk and, and the, the rail. It's the retaining walls. The retaining walls um, about to fall off. And I know Mr. Laskin has mentioned it numerous times, and we all have. Um, it, it needs to be, the sidewalk needs to be closed um, in the meantime. And I hope that on my ride home from council tonight back to west side i see that it it should be closed off because it's a it's a hazard yeah yes. it, it, it needs to be dealt with uh, immediately and have it have it the sidewalk Actually, closed since off. They're, i mean if they're so interested in an emergency in this situation we've been after them for two and a half years to at least based on the pin dot engineers recommendation to close off those sidewalks and that's something they haven't done yet and, and again, I predicted that wall was going to fall out. It was, it's held on basically by wiring there. Yes, you did. That's it. Yeah. And, and uh, every day it's going farther and farther. So yeah. I don't know if it totally collapsed yet or what. And just driving by in the car, and I didn't stop. I was on my way here. Just driving by, you could see the, you oh, yeah. could see it dip it's down. Right through. And the sidewalk even underneath to... it is, is ready to go, too. So hopefully we'll, we'll have Ms. Abley in here next so. week and, and we can discuss that. And also a concern I, I do have with the construction is, will there be any, I, I know that the, from what PennDOT told Mr. Laskin, the road is in fine condition for traffic. I'm worried that when the, the, the sidewalk repairs begin that the road may be closed. And if that were to happen at the same time when the Linden Street Bridge is out, that would be a disaster for West Side. Hopefully they'll do it one lane at a time, but one yeah. side at a time, but we'll So that, that's definitely I something that needs to be looked at also. So hopefully Ms. Abel will come in and we could discuss these issues before a, a final vote or tabling and possibly making amendments. Um, next, two letters, and I'm sure Mr. Laskin will be addressing these since he's uh, Chair for Public Safety. Um, and one, just because it was brought up tonight about the new traffic signals, um, this was from uh, Mr. Judge, the president of the IAFF, um, to Chief Davis regarding um, traffic signals for, um, that would give, when a, a fire truck is driving through, to give them a green, basically. And I know Ms. Mr. Laskin could explain it a lot better than I can. Um, and it was to Chief Davis, it was just requesting that the city 
you know, move on, on this to get this taken care of to protect not only the firefighters but to protect the motorists as well um, because it's, it says there's so many accidents that occur at intersections and this was addressed to Chief Davis. We were copied on it. Um, Mrs. Craig, can we please send a letter to Chief Davis asking that council is informed of what steps have been taken on this matter so far? And next, um, also from the fire department, and this, and I spoke to Mr. Judge earlier today, and this one's very, very frustrating for me. Um, a few, and I'll just read this in, in summary. Um, approximately three years ago, um, the local fire union was able to get a business to donate four or five automatic external defibrillators, AEDs, to the city. Um, these are basically the, the shock paddles for when somebody goes into cardiac arrest um, that are used to, to bring them back. And the letter goes on to say that these, these cost about $1,000 per unit. They were donated to the city. And as far as the city's use, they've been sitting in um, Chief Davis's office for three years. They've never been used. And I don't understand why these aren't on our fire trucks. Um, could be used to save somebody's life. And, and the letter goes on to say that if the city isn't going to use them, that they can be donated to little leagues or different organizations throughout the city that would use them. Um, so can we also ask Mr. Uh, Chief Davis um, where this issue stands as well? Because um, I think that the people of the city are going to want an answer, and I'm sure Mr. Loscombe will elaborate on this since this is his committee. And finally, I have a couple citizens' requests. Um, one, there's a huge pothole on the corner of Jackson Street and Fillmore. The residents called the mayor's office and the DPW and nothing has been done. Um, also a few, uh, a second request um, at the end of North Washington Avenue in front of DNS Auto. Um, when you make the turn to go up, I believe it's Cherry Street, there's a small section of roadway that is in disrepair. It's, it's a mess. The rest of the road is fine on both ends, but just right around the railroad tracks, um, it's a mess. Um, so can we please send a letter to the DPW asking that that's repaired as well? And I know we have probably sent at least five or six letters um, regarding Pike Street. Um, but the residents up there are very upset. And all, all I'm, I'm asking for is an answer from Mr. Doerr. The, the street isn't being repaired. He's not telling us if it's going to be put on the paving list or not. And it's not a busy street, but the residents up there pay taxes, and th there are nice homes on that street, so I'm sure they're paying a very hefty tax bill. And they deserve, at the very least, to be able to, to ride on a road that's not going to throw their car out of alignment. And for a couple of the residents up there that ride motorcycles, it really is a dangerous issue. Um, so can we also ask if Pike Street is going to be paved, and if not, if it could be at least repaired in the meantime? And that is all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you. And Councilman Loscombe, do you have any comments or motions? Yeah, thank you. Just a couple. As usual, Mr. Rogan stole my notes again. No. <laughs> uh, no, you I believe get we're to all, the mail faster. Yes. <laughs> we're all on the same page here, definitely. I, I mean, uh, what was spoken previous to me is, is pretty much I feel the same way. Um, just before I go over some of these notes, first of all, I, I would like to commend our neighborhood watches our neighborhood associations for the work that they do tirelessly and and you know out of the goodness of their heart and the love of their city and and i really mean that um i, I hope you continue to keep the fire and i would like to see a lot more citizens join you and, and help you because as usual a lot of a lot of these groups, a lot of organizations end up with a handful of people who in, end up doing 99% of the work. Um, and, and I would just hope that more individuals would get involved and help you out. Um, I was able to attend most of the meetings previously, but our meeting is the same nights now. But, uh, you know, I helped with the fence when you took that down. But I do want to get more involved now that my work schedule is a little more finalized but uh, but I do commend all the neighborhood associations and the uh, crime watch organizations you're, you're, you're definitely making a difference in the city and I believe we all feel the same way so I just wanted to applaud you for that and, 
And to go back to the parking meters, uh, as Mr. McGough explained, Chamberlain, I think I've always believed that they never should have been put there in the first place. Um, we have to get either, you know, repeal the ordinance that put them there or whatever the, the legitimate way is to get them to pull those signs out of there and the posts. Um, and that, that, that's that. I mean, I think we're all of the consensus that it's time. Time is overdue. A couple meetings ago, uh, Mr. Nevaroski appeared here regarding the meters or the parking spaces on Mulberry Street. Now, from my, what I remember when they did the street, they took all the meters out of those blocks. Now I see meter posts there, but there's no meter heads. However, when we just approved some, a parking lot in the downtown, one of the reasons we had to remove the meters was because of site clearance. PennDOT required that. I'll tell you what, I don't know if anyone has traveled Mulberry Street heading west at nighttime, but there's going to be a fatality there. It's, it's just crazy. I mean, it's worse than Snake Road at night. You're, you're driving along, all of a sudden there's a, you're in this lane and there's a parking lane right in front of you. You're zigging over here, then it zigs back here. I don't know how they were able to do that or who did it. That's a city street, so obviously it had to be the city. I don't believe PennDOT. I thought the state road cut off at Jefferson. It doesn't. Because when we were asking about, we were asking how the width reduction was approved, they said PennDOT didn't have to approve it. It was a city street. It cut off there, let Route 11. I'm pretty certain. I, I checked on that. If it's a state road, they gave me the wrong information there then. Because they told me. Pardon? By the narrow side? Right before it becomes uh, the apron for Providence Road? No, no, I'm talking about Mulberry Street. That is Mulberry Street. The problem, no, 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 I'm sorry, up by the university. Oh, the top end. Yes, the top end from Jefferson Avenue, I was told, was, was a city road. Now, there may be an agreement for the, the state to pave it or whatever, or maintain it, but I was told they showed me the maps there. Route 11 comes over and goes over the expressway. Because I, I was. Mrs. Craig, Astounded. But we go ahead. We, when we asked about this a long time ago, uh, the information we got was that it's 307, or or the or what brings 307 or 307 right back up to. Um, anyway, that's what I was told, and that we actually had a friend of ours that was an engineer take a look at it, uh, several part aspects of it, and apparently all the aspects meet the minimum requirement. Not that that's to say the best, but the minimum requirements were met throughout. I, I still do agree with Councilman Lascom, though, that it's very dangerous and it's a road I travel all the time and it's very, very I've dangerous. I've seen skid marks coming by those parked vehicles. I, I say we have to get rid of those uh, for, for, the, for the nine or ten parking spots that they've made all this zigging and zagging for. I think it's ridiculous. We, we removed, what, five downtown just on a corner just for a parking lot. You know, again, and I, I argued about that. I'm not for removing any, but this is a situation that, that uh, produces a danger. You're talking about where Jefferson ends yes. and the other side? Yes. Jefferson actually had the state road signage to turn to go into the Moosey 307. It's go in, go into, like right. That's what I was told by PennDOT when I met with them. The map, yes. When you look at the roadway, it comes to the intersection of Jefferson. You turn right to go into the Moosic Exchange at the end of Jefferson. Which is closed right now, of course, but that would be the map for the state road. And, and that's exactly what I was told when I met with them on the reduction of by six feet of the upper part of Mulberry Street. They told me the state had nothing to do with the approval. Information and anything else, like on the Cedar Avenue light, one minute they say they can't do it, the next minute they can do it, and that was straight from Representative Valley. But I'll, I'll follow up for more information on this. But I know what was presented to me on that question. Thank you. Thank you. And the, uh, I mean, just uh, we have to do something about those meters on Mulberry Street. 
before something really happens. Uh, I actually pulled out of the court there next to Grand Teeds, and you had no visibility whatsoever. Now, for the, they have a parking lot there for the one or two spots that Grand Teeds may lose. You know, I feel sorry for them, but they do have a parking lot. Uh, the rest of the spots are being parked free right now because there are no meters, but I think it's a, it's a dangerous situation just waiting to happen. Um, West Lackawanna Avenue Bridge, I agree with Mr. Rogan on that. Uh, I still have a couple questions. Uh, this past week, I didn't have an ability due to my work schedule to, to get to any meetings, but I will be in touch with Mr. Rogan too because uh, I have a couple things to, that we could discuss together and, and perhaps work Great. on something on this. Um, and, and Mr. Rogan mentioned the, the fire department letters regarding the traffic signal. It, it, you know, a lot of people see the cameras on the new traffic signals. That's supposed to be part of the process for the timing to keep the traffic flowing. Um, there's another thing on there that's, that's a little bit taller. It looks like a reflector on there. That's put there for emergency vehicles. Uh, but they have to have the proper equipment in the vehicle to allow them as they're, they're proceeding to have a green light for the extent of the way. So there are, it, it would eliminate a lot of accidents. And, you know, I, I mean, they have those around our area. We're probably one of the last to, to get that. So I will be uh, setting up a meeting with the chief on that to, to find out what the status on that is. And uh, the other thing Mr. Rogan mentioned was the... Uh, the AEDs, the automatic external defibrillators. And they were donated to us by Santa Fe Pasteur uh, a couple of years ago because we had to approve them here. And we thought it was a great idea. They were intended to go on all the fire trucks as a first response in their neighborhoods if someone was having a heart attack. Um, obviously, to my dismay and, and to all our dismay, this hasn't happened. Uh, what Mr. Judge's letter explains is that they've been sitting in the chief's office and are not available for use. It will take several hundred dollars to purchase batteries and pads for these machines. I'm sure that we could scratch up a couple hundred dollars to activate these. But obviously I don't believe that's the holdup. Because if the, if the chief was interested in, in pursuing them, I mean, he knows he could ask us for the money to do that. And uh, so it, it, it's a shame that they've been sitting collecting dust all this time when they could be put to good use. I would just hope that, uh, you know, no one in those neighborhoods have needed them and they weren't available. But uh, the fact is that the, the firefighters union has a large majority of its members trained as EMTs. They have paramedics. I mean, that's one of the requirements to be on the fire department now. You have to have an EMT certification. However, these skills are rarely called upon. You know, basically rescue one utilizes their skills on all accidents and stuff, but uh, you know, they're being underused and they're asking to be used more. We understand legal requirements that must be met to have our members utilize these machines as part of our duties. However, the city has not attempted to make this happen. It's very simple. In good conscience, and, and, and this is what, what breaks my heart, in good conscience, I believe the city should donate these machines to the Little League organizations across the city instead of having them collect dust in a city office. While we always strive for using what equipment we have in the city to its fullest, I believe this to be a waste of life-saving technology that could better serve the residents of this city elsewhere at this point. Council accepted this donation for the business who gave the city these machines with the understanding that they would be used appropriately. If you or any other council member need any further clarification or, or explanation of this matter, I would be more than happy to provide what information I can. I would defer the majority of questions regarding why they haven't been placed in service to Chief Davis or Ryan McGowan. And I will be reaching out to them and, uh, and trying to get these activated. Uh, again, it's a good idea to donate them, but we have emergency vehicles in place in all neighborhoods of the city, and that's where they're best utilized. And if it's the sake of a couple batteries and some pads, make mo no mistake about it, I don't think any of us would turn something down. Uh, you know, they've given thousands and thousands away for different things, you know, parks and stuff like that. 
we're talking about saving a life here. And uh, it, it's a shame. But I know a while ago I had checked on it. Well, it was probably over a year ago. And uh, I was told at that time they were waiting for a couple guys to get their certifications. But it's well beyond that time. And uh, I believe now with the, with the manpower the way it is and the shifting, there's someone capable of utilizing this equipment on every piece of equipment, on every shift. And with that, I say we have to do it. And uh, hopefully uh, sooner than later. And I appreciate them for bringing it to my attention. Thank you very much. And thank you, Councilman Loscombe. Councilman Joyce, do you have comments or motions tonight? Yes, I do. First, I'd like to comment on uh, the whole food truck issue and state my position. <clears throat> the food trucks are a vital part of the downtown business sector, I, in, in my opinion. They provide a service to people on the go. They're being utilized by a pretty good amount of uh, patrons. They pay permit fees. They pay a parking fee. And they pay mercantile taxes as well. I will vote to introduce legislation tonight to give the brick and mortar restaurants as well as the um, food truck vendors a chance to sit down and come to a compromise but if no compromise happens and legislation stays and the legislation stays the same way it is I will be voting no in the following weeks secondly We've received some information from the single tax office regarding uh, city funds distributed in comparison um, from this year to last year. And as you know, the single tax office collects real estate taxes, prior year delinquent real estate tax, um, the local service tax, and the business privilege and mercantile taxes. So far, this year, we've collected $11,800,804.62 in real estate tax revenue through the first four months of the year. During the same period last year, we collected $9,291,001.87. This is an overall increase of $2,509,000. $509,802.75, which is a 27% tax increase, or a 20, sorry, a 27% increase in revenue collection. However, we must remember that there was a tax increase as well, so we would expect to see an increase in revenue, but so far, we're $2.5 million ahead of where we were last year. As far as delinquent real estate taxes from the prior year, this year so far, we've collected $309,308.69. During the prior year, we've col we collected, during the same period of the prior year, we collected $288,491.29 for an increase of $20,817.40 or a 7.22% increase. Uh, the local service tax. This year, so far, the city has collected $390,984.70. During the same period last year, the city collected $391,380.11. This is an increase of, or a decrease of $395.41, or a 0.1% decrease. So uh, the LST collections are basically comparable from this year to last year. And business privilege and mercantile taxes, the uh, summation of the two. So far this year, we've uh, collected $1,427,448.62. During the same period last year, uh, we collected $287,912.02. And that's an increase of 395.79% or one point one. 
$1.39 million. Uh, Mrs. Craig, if we could please send a letter to uh, tax collector Bill Courtright and ask him why uh, there was such a spike in collections from this year to last year. Because obviously we didn't increase the uh, business privilege or mercantile tax by 400%. So I'm very curious to see why there is a spike in those revenue in that revenue category. Another order of business tonight. We've received a report from Northeast Revenue uh, regarding delinquent property tax for all of the years prior to the previous year of 2012. And so far, um, <clears throat> uh, for the period of April 1st to April 30th, Northeast Revenue collected $62,185.95 in delinquent real estate taxes and also $5,905 in tax search fees, which is something new that was approved by council this year. And that's a total of $68,090.95. Also, uh, they ran a distribution of delinquent refuse payments for the period of April 1st to April 30th. And so far, the city of Scranton has collected $66,899.18 in delinquent refuse payments for the uh, period from April 1st to April 30th. Um, <clears throat> in another matter tonight, a, a woman, uh, I forget her name, but she came to uh, Scranton City Council a few weeks ago and she lives on Saginaw Street and voiced her concerns about the uh, trash debris that was blowing from the uh, Hilltop Manor um, property owned by the Scranton Housing Authority onto a uh, neighboring residents of Saginaw Street. And we did receive a response from Mr. Gary Pelicacci, who's the executive director of the Scranton Housing Authority. And he states, I'm in receipt of your April 19th, 2013 letter regarding trash, a trash complaint at Hilltop Manor. This issue was addressed in 2010 and, and it has continued to be addressed to the present time. The problem is not ongoing. In fact, this is the first complaint since 2010. The Scranton Housing Authority continues to have the trash picked up twice weekly and maintain and, and maintenance continues to walk the site daily to pick up all debris. Maintenance has continued to pick up all trash on both sides of Saginaw Street. One additional step that has been taken since this issue arose in 2010 was the distribution of trash cans to families that reside in buildings that are in close proximity to Saginaw Street. And he further alludes to the fact that he has visited Hilltop Manor and does not see a problem. And also the manager checks the development on a daily basis. So if the uh, resident who came here to contact us and um, mention her uh, issue about the trash on Saginaw Street blowing over from Hilltop Manor doesn't find this response satisfactory because obviously uh, Mr. Pelicacci is stating that he um, sees no problem. I would urge her to contact Scranton City Council again and hopefully we could address uh, this issue if uh, the case is not being taken care of as Mr. P Pelicacci states that it is. And um, finally, I did have one citizen request uh, about the section of the road by DNS Auto. However, Mr. Rogan also uh, stated that, so the resident must have told both of us, but that's all I have for tonight. Thank you. Good evening. I'd like to begin with a few updates. First, the city will realize additional unantic unanticipated revenue from realty transfer taxes that will be paid for the purchase of Snow Mountain. Second, the city and independent auditors 
hope to produce the 2012 audit by July 2013. The sole potential obstacle to this timeline is the obtainment of an audit of the Scranton Parking Authority. It appears that the receiver for the parking garages has refused to fund this audit. Consequently, the city will need to initiate and fund an audit as soon as possible if it hopes to produce a completed 2012 city audit in the near future. Third, a city treasurer's sale has been scheduled for June 3rd, 2013. I'll provide additional information regarding this matter during next week's council meeting. Fourth, the tentative date for implementation of the city's parking meter program is June 15th, 2013. On a related note, and with my colleagues' agreement, I asked Mrs. Craig to send a letter to Standard Parking requesting the following information. A breakdown of any and all revenue received for parking garages and parking meters for the months of March and April 2013. If excess revenue is realized, are those funds forwarded to the city for payment of SPA bonds? What is the total number of employees, both full-time and part-time, Standard has hired for the parking meter program? Uh, is that agreeable to my colleagues? Yes. Thank you. Next, included in tonight's agenda for introduction is item 5H, a resolution requesting the Lackawanna County Commissioners to establish a policy for the Assessor's Office to immediately commence reviewing the status of all properties qualifying for exemption from property taxation under the institutions of purely public charity act. This legislation was drafted by Solicitor Hughes and it represents council's response to the commissioner's refusal to review tax exempt city properties to determine whether they qualify for exemption from property taxation. According to the resolution, it is the County of Lackawanna and not the City of Scranton that is solely responsible to determine whether a property qualifies for an exemption from property taxation under the aforenamed Act. In addition, the County is responsible for establishing the assessed value of all real estate within the county in accordance with the third class county assessment law. Further, this legislation cites the total assessed valuation of all real estate within the city of Scranton as $594,242,686, of which $198,000,000 $821,797 or 33.6% is tax exempt. There are in fact 1,298 tax exempt properties in our city. And uh, one of those, the University of Scranton, owns 56 parcels uh, for a total of uh, 1,198 million, no, 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 I'm sorry, that's the grand total. For a total of 37,418,166 dollars that has been removed from the tax rolls. We hope the county commissioners would uphold their responsibilities, stop passing the buck to the city, and help the citizens whom they have sworn to serve and represent. This legislation marks the fourth occasion that the governing body of the city of Scranton has asked the Lackawanna County Commissioners to engage in intergovernmental cooperation for the benefit of the people. Three times in less than a year, the city has been rebuffed. In an effort to again avoid this crucial issue, the county may state that it can't fund this procedure. To that I say, the county can't afford not to do it. 
33.6% of city property is tax exempt and growing. A review of nonprofits, as provided by law, can significantly benefit the county, city, and school district by producing increased tax revenue for each and alleviating the weighty tax burden of homeowners and businesses. The commissioners should follow the example set by Allegheny County in March 2013 and implement this resolution immediately, particularly since it has failed to conduct a tax reassessment since 1967. It will represent a strong and long overdue step on the road to fairness in taxation. Finally, Council will table item 7E on tonight's agenda. Since the legislation was submitted to City Council, the police chief has been reviewing it for possible changes. Because he requires additional time, the legislation will be tabled until Council receives his recommendations. And that's it. 5B, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate officials to enter into a sub-grantee and cooperation agreement with the Scranton Public Library for Keystone Recreation Park and Conservation Fund grant in the amount of $500,000 for repairs to the historic Albright Memorial Library. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5B be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Yes, just uh, I believe we have to ask them those questions that were uh, presented by our solicitor. Yes, that, that will be yes, done. Absolutely. And then the changes, council can amend the legislation to include the proper Correct. Uh, verbiage. I will vote to introduce it. Anyone else on the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5C. Creating and establishing special city account number 02229605 entitled Keystone Recreation Park and Conservation Fund Grant for the receipt and disbursement of grant from the Keystone Recreation Park and Conservation Grant Funds in the amount of $500,000 for repairs to the historic Albright Memorial Library. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5C be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, and so moved. 5D, amending section 340-1, 340-8, 340-9, and 340-13A of the Code of the City of Scranton, governing peddling and soliciting within the City of Scranton. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5D be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Yes. Uh, last week, I, I think you mentioned a deadline for um, people to any recommendations. Uh, would you? I, I'm sorry, but I forgot what the date was, and the, um, I don't know that the. the fr I believe we should receive it in council's office the Friday before the May 16th meeting. So that would be what, May 10th, okay. maybe? So that would be that. That would be after they've I, met right. next I week. I want yes. them all to meet. Seventh and, and ninth, then, they meet. Right. Very and good. Thank you. That's you know. So council has time to review everything and then speak to our solicitor to make the proper amendments. Yes. Oh, thank you. Okay. Anyone else? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it, and so moved. 5E, repealing file of the council number 112 of 2009 as amended, entitled, Establishing the Duties, Responsibilities, and Qualifications of the City Health Inspector, providing for the payment of an annual license fee for public eating or drinking establishments within the City of Scranton, establishing annual application and renewal requirements, imposing certain duties upon the Deputy Director of Inspections and the City Health Inspector, providing guidelines for revocation and reinstatement of licenses, and providing for imposition of penalties. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5A be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 
five f establishing the duties responsibilities and qualifications of the city health inspector providing for the payment of an annual license fee for public eating and drinking establishments within the city of scranton establishing annual application and renewal requirements imposing certain duties upon the director of licensing inspections and permits and the city health inspector providing guidelines for revocation and reinstatement of licenses and providing for imposition of penalties at this time i'll entertain a motion that item 5f be introduced into its proper committee so moved second on the question all those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. aye aye opposed the ayes have it and so moved 5g amending file of council number 22 2006 entitled authorizing and approving the designation of parking spaces for certain city of scranton personnel in and along Diggs Court, the parking area in the rear of the City of Scranton Municipal Building, and a parking lot along Mulberry Street adjacent to the Scranton Fire Headquarters, and authorizing the City of Scranton Police Department to enforce the parking designation as reflected in the attached schematic. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5G be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? Uh, just one. Uh, do we know who? Were the genesis of this uh, who brought it I can I could address that if that's uh, basically um, it, it's, a, it's a combination of things there's some positions that had parking spaces that are no longer there like the director of public safety and that oh, okay. the change of shifts with the fire department required a few more spots uh, and so so what they did was just rearrange some of the parking well, when it says enforced I guess the reason I ask I parked back there <laughs> during the day <laughs> and uh, I'm, I guess I'm not, uh, when I'm doing business in City Hall, not the... Mr. McGough, there, well, there's, there's there a map no, in there. There is no spot for council. Just find out what, what spot you saying. fill in the map. And I don't, yeah. like getting, I don't like getting parking tickets in the front, so, uh, but that's fine. I, I was just wondering what the, the reasoning was. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. 5H, requesting the commissioners of Lackawanna County to establish a policy for the assessor's office of Lackawanna County to immediately commence reviewing the status of all properties qualifying for exemption from property taxation under the Institutions of Purely Public Charity Act. At this time, I'll entertain a motion that item 5H be introduced into its proper committee. So moved. Second. On the question? All those in favor of introduction signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Sixth order, 6A, reading by title, file of council number 20, 2013, an ordinance. Amending file of council number 41, 2008, file of council number 40, 2010, File of Council Number 53, 2011, entitled An Ordinance Authorizing the Mayor and Other Appropriate Officials of the City of Scranton to Take All Necessary Actions to Implement the Consolidated Submission for Community Planning and Development Programs to be funded under the Community Development Block Grant Program, Home Investment Partnership Program, and Emergency Solutions Grant Program by transferring 287000 from projects 0905.8 Westside Falcons, 12-05.8 Westside Falcons, 12-05.8 Westside Falcons Paving, 12-05.22 North Scranton Little League, 12-235.A SRA slash Vacant Property Review Committee, 11-99 Demolition of Hazardous Structures, to project 12-01 West Lackawanna Avenue Bridge Project. You've heard reading by title of item 6A. What is your pleasure? I move that item 6A pass reading by title. Second. On the question? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it and so moved. Mrs. Evans, mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's appropriate at this time, but um, should we move to table this? until such time as Ms. Abley is able to appear at a caucus to discuss the transfer of funds? We can. My only concern is uh, I'm hoping that she would do so next week because I don't want to hold up the project. 
No, nor do I, but I, I don't want to vote on it. As is. Yeah, and it's fi you know, for a final vote until she does, you know, until we do have an opportunity to speak. We can table it then. Would you like to make the motion? Uh, it, I, I won't make the motion if others don't, uh, you know, feel it's appropriate. Uh, I, I would agree. I, I wouldn't have agree. a problem. With I'd like to make a motion to uh, table um, items. And I, what is it, six A? Yes. Second. Until until a caucus with uh, director of OECD is held. Second. On the question. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. The ayes have it, and so moved. Uh, Item 6A is hereby tabled. And hopefully that caucus will be next week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Seventh Order 7A, for consideration by the Committee on Finance for adoption, file of Council Number 18, 2013, transferring funds from Fund 01 City of Scranton Penn Security TAN A and Fidelity Bank 2012 TAN accounts, which projects are completed and no longer needed for the conduct of city business and abolishing and closing said accounts and transferring the funds remaining in said accounts to the PNC general funding checking account listed below. What is the recommendation of the chair for the Committee on Finance? As chairperson for the Committee on Finance, I recommend final passage of item 7A. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7A legally and lawfully adopted. 7B, for consideration by the Committee on Public Safety for adoption, file of council number 19, 2013, establishing a no parking zone along the westerly side of the 1700 block of North Washington Avenue, beginning from the end of line of pin 13518 northward, to the corner of the 1100 block of Electric Street westward and southward ending at the end line of pin 13518030017 on the 1800 block of Wyoming Avenue. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Public Safety? As Chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of item 7B. Second. On the question? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? Yes. Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Yes. Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes. I hereby declare item 7B legally and lawfully adopted. 7C, for consideration by the Committee on Community Development for adoption, resolution number 18, 2013, authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a cooperation agreement between the City of Scranton Municipality <coughs> and the West Scranton Hyde Park Neighborhood Watch organization in order to file an application for financial assistance with the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Economic and Community Development for a Keystone Communities Elm Street designation. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee on Community Development? As Chair for the Committee on Community Development, I strongly recommend final <laughs> passage of item 7C. Second. On the question. Um, just like to reiterate that the Fosters are doing a great job along with uh, Mr. Borthwick, Mr. Evans, uh, the entire group are doing a great job. And as Mr. Lasco mentioned, uh, you know, you were, we were both uh, attendees at the meetings until council the meeting dates changed. Unfortunately, we're on the same night now. Um, but I live right in right in Hyde Park, just bought a house in the in the neighborhood, and um, definitely appreciate all the good work you're doing. And I think everyone who lives in the city will benefit from this long overdue renovation and beautification in West Scranton. Anyone else? Roll call, please. Mr. McGough? I guess it would have to be a strong yes. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Rogan? Yes. Mr. Loscombe? Also a strong yes. <laughs> Mr. Joyce? Yes. Mrs. Evans? Yes, a Herculean yes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I hereby <laughs> declare item 7C legally and lawfully adopted. 7D, for consideration by the Committee on Public Safety for adoption, resolution number 19, 2013, authorizing the City of Scranton to make application to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania Department of Transportation for traffic signal approval for the temporary traffic signal at the intersection of Cedar Avenue 
State Route 3023, Scranton Expressway ramps, State Route 8025, and Orchard Street to remain as a permanent traffic signal. What is the recommendation of the Chair for the Committee of, on Public Safety? As Chairperson for the Committee on Public Safety, I recommend final passage of Item 7D. Second. On the question? Uh, yeah, just very quickly. It, it, it took a disaster to finally get a traffic signal at that corner, and I'm hope, hopeful that the state will uh, approve the application for the permanent signal. Definitely. Absolutely. That, yeah, that intersection is, is very very difficult to navigate anyone else roll call please mr. McGough yes mr. Rogan yes mr. Loscom yes mr. Joyce yes mrs. Evans yes I hereby declare item 7d legally and lawfully adopted 7e for consideration by the committee on public safety for adoption resolution number 20 2013 authorizing the mayor and other appropriate city officials to execute and enter into a lease agreement with Horsepower Harley-Davidson Incorporated to lease five police package motorcycles. I would like to make a motion to table item 7E. Second. There's a motion on the floor and a second to table item 7E. Anyone on the question? I would just like to reiterate, Mrs. Evans explained uh, that the chief is still looking at, at some paperwork and that's the reason it's being tabled at this time. Uh, shall we take a roll call on the tabling? I don't think there's a need to. No? Then all those in favor signify by aye, by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. it is, and so moved in the uh, legislation is tabled. If there is no further business, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. This meeting is adjourned.